Okay, concealer, color corrector, or both? I receive questions, so many questions, about darkness, covering dark spots, concealing dark circles, okay? Uh, whether or not you need a concealer or a color corrector, or, or do you need a combination of the two? And like, what even is the difference? The difference is in the name, okay? A color corrector, when we think about color correctors, we want to take a quick look at the color wheel and think complementary colors, okay? A color corrector is going to correct color. <laughs> So typically you're utilizing the opposite color on the color wheel to neutralize whatever color you're trying to get rid of. For instance, if you have blue under eye circles, you're going to use a peach color corrector to neutralize that blue or pink, depending on your skin tone. Concealer conceals. It's generally more full coverage than your foundation and it's meant to cover stuff up. So if there's something on your face, you apply your like foundation, a layer of your foundation, and you see things still that you want to cover up. Typically, you're gonna go for a concealer. Now you have the option of utilizing one of these or using both of them together. I wanna to give you some examples and a little bit of a breakdown of like, what would you just use corrector for? What would you just use concealer for? What would you just use both for? I guess it wouldn't be a just then. Uh, but first, let's talk skin prep. Taking care of your skin overall is always going to be one of the most important things when it comes to complexion, anything complexion, okay? Which brings me to today's sponsor. Thank you so much to Sleep & Glow for sponsoring this portion of the video. Uh, I, If you've been watching my channel, then you know I've been using the Sleep & Glow pillow for like, oh, I'm so bad with time. When they first sent me one to try, basically I haven't stopped using it since. <laughs> so likely you know with a traditional pillow, it's just like a basic like pillow shape. And especially if you're like me, if you sleep on your side or if you end up sleeping on your stomach sometimes, your face just gets mushed, gets mushed into the pillow and you can wake up with lines, okay? Like those eight hours that you're supposed to be spending sleeping does a lot to your skin overnight, right? So if you're not familiar with the Sleeping Glow pillow, it has this little groove in here, which your face just kind of like nestles into like that and it just protects the delicate skin on your face, in particular your eye area, but also the area you know, around your mouth um, where you can get smile lines. And you just, no matter how hard I push, I'm just like, you know, my face is just like nice and protected. So the Omnia Pillow by Sleep and Glow, that's what it's called, is the only clinically proven and tested pillow. They actually conducted a dermal, derm why can't I say this word? Dermatological, oh, it's just too long. Uh, study in Barcelona. 87% of cases sleep wrinkles were reduced after three months of sleeping on the pillow. Uh, the diameter of the wrinkles and its depth were reduced, which is awesome. Uh, and I can say firsthand from using it, from sleeping on it every single night since I got it, which has got to be at least four years, could be five. I have no concept of time anymore. I'm always reminded of, of how much I rely on it when I travel and I have to sleep on like a regular pillow and I wake up with lines. So I'm personally like a side and kind of stomach sleeper. So I'm typically like all nestled up in here. It also has like a little bit of an indent in the center if you end up sleeping on your back. So it helps to like, it caters to every sleeping position. I end up on my stomach a lot and I'll kind of like turn like, end up with my like neck turned. And even still, even when I end up on my stomach, I'm still like my face is protected, which is really nice. They did give me a promo code, which is Alexandra15. You can get 15% off until July 21st. So if you are interested, I'll have all of the information linked down below. I highly recommend it. If you're gonna invest anywhere, invest in your pillow, you know, <laughs> invest in your like, in your sleep, in your skincare. Obviously, you know, skin prep is really important. Uh, that is not going to be the focus of this video. I've talked about that in a lot of other videos. If you want a dedicated skin prep video, uh, I'll either try to link like one up here, skincare video or request one and I will do one for you. Uh, but let's get back to the examples of when you might use a color corrector, a concealer, or utilize both of them. I am going to be doing a demonstration, so don't worry, I'm not just gonna be like talking at you with no makeup on. So corrector, color corrector, you are typically using a color corrector when you have areas, specific areas of your face that are a color that you want to neutralize. Uh, a color 
in comparison to your skin tone. So like the example that I used earlier, blue under eye circles, okay? Maybe you're someone who just gets redness, you get irritation or you have rosacea. I would say more minimal dark circles, uh, depending on the color of them. And then also sallow areas. Uh, so if you have certain areas of your face that end up looking, I mean, I have very yellowy skin anyway, uh, but if you have certain areas of your face that end up looking a little, a little bit like yellowy, um, typically there's a, like a lavender color, there are lavender color correctors that are marketed towards neutralizing that yellowy, sallow kind of color in a skin tone. So for instance, um, in, with my face, I don't have a ton of color in my face, to be honest with you, aside from my dark circles, that's my biggest problem. Um, however, in the center of my face, if I pull my shirt down a little bit, my neck doesn't have a whole lot of redness. If I compare to my neck, you can kind of see that a lot of the redness that I do have in my face is kind of like um, localized to the center of my face, my T-zone for the most part, because it is a very delicate area. Uh, so like a little bit of redness around my nostrils, a little bit on my chin. I tend to get redness around my smile lines. Sometimes I get redness up here. And then obviously I've got some little like post breakout marks. Auto focus, please. If you could focus, can you focus? So one thing that you may have heard of recently is a uh, Demi makeup. This was kind of like going around for a little while as like a little bit of a trend where rather than, you know, applying foundation, applying concealer, applying bronzer, applying blush on top of each other in layers, you're applying, you're focusing on smaller sections. It's kind of like a paint by numbers of makeup, if that makes sense. So like I would be focusing just on this area and like, okay, I've got redness here. I'm gonna apply a little bit of a green color corrector. So that is one instance where you might be using more um, color correction. So I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm just gonna rehydrate my face a little bit um, with, I've been using this Versed Dew Point Moisturizing Gel. As a primer, it's just a moisturizer, but I've really been liking it as a primer just cause it's like a lightweight hydration. And I don't know, it gives me like a, kind of a nice grippy base. My skin's well hydrated, but I did do my skincare like first thing in the morning. So I could use a little, little extra prep, especially around my, around my nostrils and underneath my eyes. I'm just using tiny amounts, little like pea size. Okay, so corrector. So for this redness around my nose, uh, there are a lot of color correctors out there. All right. A lot of color correctors. I'm going to link my favorites down below and I will categorize them from light coverage to full coverage. Okay. Uh, one of the ones that I really like as in terms of green color corrector, because I don't have a ton of redness in my skin is the Givenchy Prism Lieb uh, skin caring corrector. This is obviously the green one. This is really great. Their color correctors are really nice because they're super hydrating and they're pretty lightweight. They're not a full coverage color corrector. So if you're looking for something full coverage, this isn't necessarily for you, but if you're looking for something a little more sheer, so I'm going to just pop a little bit around my nostril. What brush do I want to use here? This. I always use this, my Sigma E24 brush. I use this for like basically everything when it comes to concealing. Um, so I'm just going to pat this around my nostril. I'm gonna focus it in the area that has the redness. So like under here, mostly just in this little crease. Okay. Could use a teeny little bit more right there, right there. So gently patting with synthetic bristles, which isn't going to pick up the product as much. It's great for creams. Under attack. And this corrector is really great for delicate areas. Cause like I said, it's not too heavy. It's very moisturizing. Okay. So can you see that difference? this side of my nose, this side of my nose. Okay. So that redness that I had around that nostril, 
was gone. You can see a little bit of greenness. So you just want to make sure it greenness. Just make sure that you buff it into the rest of the skin if you're just trying to neutralize color. Also, my chin, I don't know how well, it does, I can't really see it on the um, monitor, but it looks pretty obvious here. I'm just gonna put, once again, tiniest little dot. I'm gonna do half my chin so you can see the difference. Just right in the center. Can you see that? Just neutralize that redness. So it doesn't really look like green on my skin, especially I have olive skin, so, you know, that helps. Another place. It's just kind of like in here, I have like a little bit of redness. So I'm just putting the tiniest dots, focusing in this area. So it's kind of like here, a little bit of redness into my smile line. Now, if you're a person who has a lot of redness on your cheeks, say you have rosacea or something and you want to try demi makeup what i would suggest is utilizing this technique okay so it's kind of like you're neutralizing the redness in the areas where you don't want it where you think that it like where it can end up looking kind of like strange or stand out whatever redness you might have around your cheeks now if it's very very red you can go in with your neutralizer but you just want to make sure that you're using a little bit less then build that neutralizer up a little bit more in the areas where you don't want the redness, okay? So you can kind of utilize the natural color of your skin that's already occurring to create like a beautiful natural makeup look, you know? It's kind of like drawing um, negative space, you utilizing that negative space. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. If you wanna see, I've been thinking about doing a video of my updated everyday makeup. I'm doing it very differently. Um, and it kind of works that way. It's sort of a reverse process, a little process. So if you want to see that, let me know. Okay. So the only other place that I have like a teeny bit of redness, it's like right there, but oh, that was way too much for that area. I don't need that much. I don't need that much. Once again, just the half and just doing a little buffing. So this side has the color correction. This side does not. Not too bad, right? Even just like that, you know, even not touching my dark circles at all, just kind of like makes my skin look a little less, it makes it look a little more flawless, but it doesn't look like I'm wearing any makeup, right? It looks like just, oh, she has no redness in her face. Now, when it comes to color correcting, another one that I uh, talk about a lot is under eye circles. So for instance, if you are someone who has maybe like blue, maybe purple, under eye circles, but it's very, very light, then color correction is a really great option for you. I would say that typically utilizing simply color correction and not and omitting a concealer is great for people who have the color in their face that they want to get rid of that isn't too, too dark on their face, okay? If whatever you're trying to color correct is significantly darker than the rest of your skin tone, you're probably going to need to use a color corrector and a concealer, and we'll get to that. Now, concealer, if you're utilizing just a concealer, you can, you have the option of using it the same way that I am using this color corrector on my face, right? So like, if I didn't want to neutralize that redness because for me personally, I don't have that much redness, I could just go in with a little bit of concealer and do that. So on this side, I'm gonna show you that. My favorite concealer for this is Kosas. This is the 0.5 Neutral Revealer Concealer. This is a really great match for my skin tone. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So just little dots, I'm just gonna use the same brush. I'm just gonna use the other side. Buffing, so this concealer is a really great skin tone match for me. We'll save the dark circles for last, okay? Dark circle peeps, don't worry. Okay, so there it is with concealer. There it is with color corrector. Now keep in mind that the color corrector formula, much more lightweight, much more sheer in comparison to this concealer. This is a relatively like, I would say medium coverage concealer that can be built up. So once again, focusing it here, where I have redness in my smile lines. Okay, just a little, just a little bit. 
buffing. A little redness on my chin. Okay, so this is the side done with concealer. This is the side done with color corrector. So it's really going to be up to you which one you decide to use. You can do both of these things with each of these products. Another use for a concealer is spot concealing, right? Um, so just covering up little spots that you might want to conceal. So I have this spot right here, which I have the option of using a green color corrector because there is a little bit of redness here, but I would say it's mostly like kind of a brown color now. It's like a reddish brown. Um, I'm gonna go in with a, just a dab of my concealer. Conceal that. So I'm just patting it in and then lightly patting around the edges to blend that into the rest of my skin so that it's not totally obvious, especially because I'm not wearing foundation right now. Okay, perfect. Not perfect, it's not completely perfect. My skin does not look completely flawless, but in comparison, you don't even really see that little spot right? Now, if that was what it looked like a few days ago, <laughs> which was super large and inflamed and red, I would suggest using a color corrector first, then going in with a concealer, which brings me to using, using both. both. Now, I'm a firm believer that using both should, for the most part, be reserved for very, very dark pigment, okay? Uh, so, for instance, if this was large and inflamed in red. I would go in with a slightly more full coverage green color corrector to neutralize that redness. And then because that green is probably going to stand out on my skin tone, because the zit itself was very inflamed, very dark, very red, then I would go over that green with a full coverage concealer. In this situation, this is where you want to consider how these two formulas are going to be working together. Okay, so generally, in my opinion, you want to match coverage when it comes to layering color correctors and concealers. So if I'm using a medium coverage color corrector, then I want to either use a medium coverage concealer or a more full coverage concealer over top, okay? If I'm using a light coverage color corrector, I can use light to medium to full coverage on top of that. What I don't wanna do is use a full coverage color corrector and then a light coverage concealer over that, okay? because when you are combining color corrector and concealer, you are concealing over the color corrector. The color corrector is neutralizing that color that is probably pretty dark. So what you're gonna see is that green spot. Do you know what I mean? So you wanna make sure that whatever you're going over that with is full coverage, okay? One of the best examples is under eye circles or dark spots. Remember, the value of these two things is very important. So if you have a dark spot on your face, if you have dark under eye circles that are significantly darker than your actual skin tone, you can just use a concealer. But one of the like most asked questions on my, this is one of the most asked questions on my channel. Like I can't even tell you how many times this has been asked. Why, <laughs> why when I apply concealer, does my concealer look gray? Why? And it is because you are placing the concealer on top of something that's already dark. Remember that this, that none of these products are completely opaque, okay? Nothing is completely opaque. So if you're putting a light concealer that is the same color as your skin tone, right? It's a concealer, it's the same color as your skin tone. You're putting it on top of a dark spot, right? It's gonna show through gray. Why? Because that dark color underneath isn't completely concealed it's still gonna show through a little bit. And putting that light color on top of a darker color can end up making it look ashy, which is why it comes through as this like gray color, which is not so flattering, especially when you're trying to conceal your under eyes, okay? For instance, I have kind of like purpley brownish, little bit of reddish uh, uh, under eye circles, and people get very confused as to why I would use a more peachy color corrector. It is specifically for this reason. I am not using a peachy color corrector to neutralize the color underneath my eyes. When I use a peachy color corrector, it's not neutralizing the color. What it's doing is warming up the color so that when I go in with that light color on top, it doesn't show through as gray, okay? So we're adding warmth, we're adding life to that dark spot 
so that it ends up looking like one with my skin. We gotta, you gotta think in layers. Your skin is layers, right? Skin is translucent. It's not completely opaque. Example, we'll give you an example. This is especially important if you're someone who likes to brighten. If you're doing a full face of makeup and you like to brighten your under eyes, but you have dark circles. All right, so here I have Huda Beauty Marshmallow. This is quite light, quite light. All right, I'm gonna show you how this looks. We're just gonna do little bits, little bits today underneath my eyes with no color corrector. I'm not gonna take it, or maybe I will. People always get mad at me when I don't take it all the way up, even though it creases all the time, and that's why I don't take it all the way up, because it creases. Blah, blah, blah. Just take it all the way up. <laughs> Do you see that? Do you see? Okay, so this is obviously a significantly lighter concealer than my actual skin tone. And this is a generally pretty full coverage concealer. However, do you see that exactly where I place that concealer because I'm placing it over top of a darker pigment, it kind of looks like ashy underneath my eyes. Now, one of my favorites, super affordable LA Girl Pro Conceal, Pro concealer. Uh, this is actually not a color corrector. This is their concealer in light ivory, but it is a very nice peach color for light to fair skin. This, as you can see, very peachy, right? So when I blend this out, uh, it's not going to completely get rid of my dark circles. It does have pretty decent coverage, however, though, because it, however, though, because it is a concealer. But do you see how warm it's making this area look? Like I said, it is peachy. And because my dark circles are kind of like purpley brownish red, I don't know. I don't exactly want to make this area look any more orange, right? So I would never do the demi makeup technique in this way on this eye like that, okay? But do you see how much warmer? See how much warmer? So if I were trying to do just like a color corrector technique and that's it, I don't want to use a concealer, I would not be using this color corrector for this purpose, all right? But look what happens when I layer the Huda Beauty, once again, same amount, very light, on top of this peach corrector. First of all, you're creating extra coverage with the color corrector and we're warming this area up. So now that I've applied this very light concealer, look at how much better, how much more flawless and one with my skin that looks with just the colors, the tones, all right, compared to this. First of all, coverage amped up. Second, we don't have that gray cast coming through from the darkness, okay? So that is one of the best examples for utilizing color corrector and concealer. Now this technique applies to dark spots. So if you are a person who has like sun damaged spots or you just have any dark spot, or if like you said, like, like, like you, you said, said, like you said, <laughs> Uh, post acne marks or just like super big inflamed acne spots. You can utilize this exact same technique. Typically you're going to use a warmer color corrector like this, a peach or an orange or a red depending on your skin tone underneath concealer when you're neutralizing something that's like a brown color, when it's a dark spot, when it's a dark circle, okay? If it's red, use your green color corrector and then go over top with your concealer. God, it makes such a big difference, it's crazy. So just to recap, color corrector is used to neutralize color that is on your face. Typically, it's not too, too dark, all right? But it's a color that stands out on your skin, might look out of place, and you want to correct it. Concealer is for things that just need more coverage, all right? Your foundation isn't doing it, you need a little bit more coverage. And you utilize both of these products together when you have an area of the face that is dark darker than your skin tone, and you just need the two to work together to get rid of this thing. And you can get creative. For instance, say you have a color corrector that is a really nice formula, it's great for your skin, you love it, it feels like skincare, but it's not full coverage enough. You can use that 
then go in with your concealer. And then when you go in with your light concealer, maybe you still just like need a little extra color correcting. Maybe instead of using like a really, really light powder underneath your eyes, you use something that's a little more like yellowy toned or peachy toned, depending on your skin tone, you know, uh, or has a little bit more warmth in it in that area so that you are kind of like getting creative with how you layer products to get your favorite finish. In my opinion, you should prioritize the products that you know and love than trying a million different things, you know? Like, get creative with your problem solving. <laughs> For me, I realized that I needed to, for my under eye circles and my preference, I needed to layer light amounts of coverage. So I use more full coverage like color corrector and concealer, but smaller amounts of that. And to get my desired effect, using a bunch of different powders, I kind of like mix them all together to create like my favorite or my like ideal under eye setting powder. So I was using the e.l.f. Halo Glow powder and I ended up like taking a bunch of other powders and mixed it in with this to add a little bit extra coverage, but while maintaining this formula that I really, really love. <laughs> so get creative. Like, I don't know what your problem might be, but don't put yourself in some kind of box and feel like it has to be a color corrector or it has to be this concealer or, you know, whatever. Like you can't use a powder that way. Like I said, I will link my favorite color correctors and concealers down below and I will categorize them from light coverage, medium to full coverage. Just keep in mind, if you are on a budget, there are good ones. Like I said, like I love the LA Girl Pro Conceal. They do have actual color correctors, which are really nice. So like they have um, these in like green and I think yellow and I don't know if they have all the colors, but I will link those, which are awesome and they're super affordable because they're LA girl. Generally more like drugstore color correctors, I personally find them to not be so great. That's the one that I really, really like. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the, in the comments because I feel like I need to kind of like get reacquainted with some of my drugstore brands. But yeah, I hope that this was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please thumbs up, comment, subscribe whatever else the other options are, turn on the things or whatever. And let me know what you would like to see next. I do a lot of makeup shiz and I'm gonna continue to do that for you. Yeah, again, thank you to Sleep and Glow for sponsoring the first portion of this video. Uh, highly recommend, don't forget to check them out. Thanks for watching guys. I will see you at a later date.